We started our study of motion by trying to understand the relationships between position, velocity, and acceleration. An object accelerates when there is a net external force acting on it. Newton's second law of motion states that the sum of the outside forces on an object is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. The Greek letter capital sigma denotes sum. External forces mean that an object cannot cause itself to accelerate. We'll talk more about this when we get to Newton's third law. Let's start with two problems from your textbook with a block accelerating horizontally across a flat tabletop. Here's the first problem. Two forces, 50 newtons and 30 newtons, act in opposite directions on a box. What is the mass if its acceleration is 4 meters per second squared? The block accelerates when it's pushed across the table, but what about the vertical forces acting on it? Obviously, the block has weight, but since it doesn't accelerate vertically, the downward force of the earth pulling on the block must be equal to the normal force of the table supporting the block. So the normal force is equal to the weight, mg. Now let's solve the problem. We're given the information that there is a 50 Newton force to the right and a 30 Newton force to the left. The box must accelerate in the direction of the larger force. So the acceleration of 4 meters per second squared is to the right, which we'll call the positive x direction. Newton's second law says that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. The forces include a 50 Newton force to the right, which is positive, and a 30 Newton force to the left, which is negative. The net force is 20 Newtons, so the box has to have a mass of 5 kilograms. By the way, it doesn't matter whether you draw the arrows on the top, middle, or bottom of the block. In the book, they show the 30 Newton force on the bottom edge of the block. This indicates that the force is due to friction between the block and the table. The next problem is similar, but involves vertical motion. A four kilogram rock that has been dropped from a high cliff experiences a force of air resistance of 15 Newtons. What are the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of the rock? Start with a diagram showing the forces on the rock. We're given the mass of the rock and asked to find its acceleration. Since they tell us that the rock was dropped from a high cliff, we can guess that it's accelerating downwards. They also give us the hint not to forget the gravitational force acting on the rock. That's its weight, mg, which is 40 newtons. The force of air resistance must reduce the overall acceleration of the rock. So the force of air resistance 15 newtons must point upward. Now apply Newton's second law. The sum of the forces is the mass times the acceleration. The weight points downward, which we've decided is the direction of the acceleration. So it comes in as positive. Air resistance is upward, so it comes in as a negative force. The net force is 25 newtons, and the rock has an acceleration of 6.25 meters per second squared. The acceleration of 6.25 meters per second squared is consistent with the presence of air resistance. In a vacuum, the rock would accelerate downwards at 10 meters per second squared. Let's do one more problem. A 5 kilogram rock falls with an acceleration of 7 meters per second squared. What is the gravitational force on the rock? What is the net force? What is the magnitude of the force of air resistance? Start with a diagram of the rock. 
We are given that its mass is five kilograms and that it accelerates downwards at a rate of seven meters per second squared. So once again, we'll define the direction of acceleration to be the positive direction because the acceleration relates to the net forces acting on the rock. A downward force due to gravity is the weight of the rock, 50 newtons. The force of air resistance has to point upward, reducing the downward acceleration of the rock. Apply Newton's second law. The net force equals the mass times the acceleration. The net force equals 5 kilograms times 7 meters per second squared, or 35 newtons. The individual forces include the weight which is downwards in the positive direction, and the unknown force of air resistance, which is upwards. We can solve for the force of air resistance, which is 15 newtons in the upward direction.